Hello and welcome to Off the Cuff. Our guest today is not just Hindi cinema's young star, but also somebody who is very candid and very entrepreneurial at this age. Uh, Anushka Sharma, welcome to Off the Cuff. Thank you. Thank you for having how, me. How wonderful to have you on this show. And uh, Anushka, to, to help me in this conversation, I have uh, Ruhi Tiwari, who is our associate welcome. editor with the print. Uh, so she's the one who will backstop me because huh, if, uh, if you get like some facts wrong, <laughs> like if you say the wrong names of my film, I will not pass a GK test on <laughs> Hindi cinema beyond the seventies. But right? you told me you read Google. You told Google me. here helpline. Yeah. So she's my helpline. <laughs> so she's my Google. Good old Google. So uh, Anushka, what's occupying your mind right now? Blank. Blank. So what happens between two big hits? A lot of happiness. <laughs> <laughs> and as if hits are not happiness. What hits? Film hits. Film Hit hits. films. Yeah, that what? is happiness. Yeah, that's what I said. So what happens between the hits? I think uh, to just elaborate that, that what I'm saying, um, you know, we have to wait really long as actors to show our final product, which is a film, and to get feedback because obviously the feedback that people give us is ultimately what is going to um, satisfy us. So I think that time is a long time. So when finally a film does well, it is the most amazing feeling. Um, and I've been very fortunate that this year I've, um, I've done two films. Two of my films are released. Um, Sultan and Edil Hai Mushkil, for your reference. Um, and uh, yeah, and they've done really good business. And I mean, I, I, I've been appreciated. My performances uh, have been appreciated in two films where I've played very distinctly different characters. Right. So it's been a good year. I mean, I feel, I feel very um, happy. I've also produced a film this year. So, I mean, it's been mental, but I've enjoyed it. I'm happy. I think I'm doing what uh, I'd like to. So, Anishka, not only have you had a good year, you've actually, in a way, had a dream career. Uh, you were launched by Yashraj Movies, which is opposite Shah Rukh Khan, which is really the best anybody can ask for. Your second movie was a hit. It was a great film. Everybody still loves to watch it. What have been the highlights of your career since you were, you know, launched by uh, Yashraj? See, actually, that's, that's the thing. My first release, what you call my second release, actually is not my second release. Right. It was... Um, you signed it was my first. third release. Oh, really? Band Baja Bharat. Right. I, I, you were right. referring to Band right. Baja Bharat, right. right? Yeah, so that's my third release actually. But yes, people don't remember my second release, which is for good reasons. Was it Ladies versus uh, Ricky Behel? <laughs> no, it was something else. It was called Badmash Kampli. Oh, okay of course, with Shahid Kapoor. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so the thing is, I mean, you know, I obviously had a dream launch. I mean, I am not an industry kid. My, pair, my father was in the army. I've lived in a very sheltered army, cantonment all my life. I come from a very middle class background. I don't even have a friend who's anyway associated with films, you know. So it was obviously a big deal. Um, and then to be launched in the way that I was, opposite Shah Rukh Khan, and most importantly, being directed by Aditya Chopra and being produced by Yash Chopra, you know. So it's, it doesn't get better than that. And w when the film released, I mean, I obviously had a lot of expectations and, you know, I. I mean, I don't know, I thought like the world's going to be at my feet, you know, because that's what you think when you're like 20 years old, you're like, of course I can do anything. But um, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't that, I mean, the response wasn't that much, you know, so I feel like um, um, maybe I was expecting too much, but there was a lull period, which is why I guess you could not even uh, you remember. remember. Company. Yeah, so, so this, my second film came a little later. Right. So that lull period was actually good. I think it kind of made me more stable headed. But yeah. how did you take this change from uh, not being a part of the film industry at all? As you mm -hmm. said, you didn't have anybody in the film industry. To suddenly coming into the limelight where your personal lives are exposed, where whatever you do is highlighted by the media. How did that work out for you emotionally? You know, the thing is, if you were dreaming all your life to become an actor, I think you would have been well equipped to, um, to deal with fame and to, to deal with people's interest in you. But I think since I was never working towards becoming an actor, I, was, I never thought it was a possibility. So I'm a very practical person. I thought it's obviously not going to happen. So I never thought about it. But when you do end up reaching here, and, and the way that I did, uh, it was a lot to take, you know, for me. I think for the first couple of years, I was just feeling very overwhelmed. I used to get very frightened when people used to come and ask me for autographs and wanted to take selfies, you know, I used to be like, 
how do i react what should my mannerism be how how are stars supposed to behave has stardom changed you personally as a person see i'm not i'm not that person who thinks are mai golgappe nahi kha sakti and all that Ab, no, i don't really want to eat golgappas on the road i have no interest i never had any interest even earlier i think you mature very early because you're dealing with so much more i know that i could not connect with my friends who were in college you know who were still in college and i felt like i couldn't connect with them in, in the way that i they would i found their conversations very frivolous and you know i mean it was all of that so i think you i grew up in the industry like i acquired whatever i however i think however however i am um with my experiences in the industry and i think it's the best place you know it really, really teaches you i treat it as a school this industry i really do i really treat it, treat it as a school and uh, the people in the industry as my gurus coming from there i feel like there's so much to learn here because you meet all kinds of people there's a good side and there's a bad side as is with everything and uh, it gave i think it i'm more level headed and more humble than i was i think i'm not as cocky as i used to be when i was a teenager you talked about good side and bad side yeah uh, tell us a few instances of the good side that you discovered and the bad side that you discovered see you not know, that phase that i was talking about those couple of first couple of years in the in the industry i mean i didn't know what to do i didn't know what films to sign a lot of people would tell me a lot of things like sign more movies you know you have to be seen all the time out of sight is out of mind and all that and somehow i just couldn't relate to that i could not understand that and I, it's not something that that i felt like i needed to do but you're so impressionable at that time right so you you second guess yourself because all these experienced people are talking about us you feel like yeah maybe i should listen to them but somehow didn't sit well with me but what happened was with my third film band baja barat which was something i think that's the film that actually is a huge turning point in my career so that's a film with a first time director and a new actor um and that's the film that got me the you know the first sort of acceptance and success that i was hoping for so i feel like i did what i thought was right you know um and uh, i saw after that i saw people change like suddenly i was being called to all parties and i was being invited everywhere and they wanted to talk to me and all and i felt like okay so i got a reality check i was like okay so this is how this place functions so if you're doing well everything is going good people you know will be nice to you and if you're not doing well it doesn't really matter so i've become that person why just focus on just doing well and i'm not thinking out of sight is out of mind and all that rubbish i think only your films are you know ultimately it's that that that's what matters you know anushka there is this impression that people outside the industry get that there are camps in the industry and you have to be part of either this camp or that camp do you think that's true are you part of any camp no i mean obviously if you look at my career uh, i've worked with everybody i've worked with all the khans and i've worked with the you know the newer actors ranveer singh ranveer kapoor and and uh, you know shahid so i i don't i don't belong to any camp and i guess my career is testament to that you know because um, we yeah, are because i work with everybody and i have had good relations with everyone so i don't belong to any camp you've you know. been directed by both aditya chopra and karan johar yeah. so that's a dream uh, career for yeah, most people yeah i would love to be in the camp of like all these directors that's <laughs> the camp i really want to be in but you are the producer now <clears throat> that's the reason i called you an entrepreneur she produced one of my favorite films nh10 you producing one more now isn't it yeah which is a bit different from that one yeah so it's not as serious as nh10 was nh10 was a film that i don't think everyone could watch i i went right. to the theaters and there were people like closing their eyes and watching the film and most of them were men let me tell you that <laughs> so that was like i was like <laughs> but uh, yeah philori is a, a, a more accessible film but a film like <coughs> nh10 which was very tough very raw very violent uh and you had a negative positive role yeah uh, so all the men who were watching that film saw you bashing up so many men yeah and bashing up not a little bit yeah right? <laughs> like killing like killing yeah. <laughs> ba- bashing up almost like the guy in that what what amir film gajni, gajni right yes, uh, yeah. just bashing to people. death so what makes somebody <laughs> at your age uh, i mean you were obviously 3 years younger than even this when you started on that right yeah, yeah. Uh, what makes someone like you uh, who's in mainstream cinema who's a big star take on a story like that because that story has commercial limitations also i think ultimately that is what actors want you know that you're only going to get that respect that you desire 
with your uh, performances which means you have to have good films and good roles for it so it for me it was like i lapped it up when it uh, when it came my way because uh, i saw the potential in it ultimately um, you know you you have to just go by your instincts on my career my entire career has been just based on my instincts and that's what i've done and i didn't think i was taking some really bold step or anything like that i thought it was a very normal thing to do um it was a film i loved and it was a film i thought was going to make a mark and and it did so i guess it's just you know it's just decisions yeah so this off the cuff is just warming up we'll take a short break and we'll be right back with you don't go away I think we can have the microphone go around. I'm already seeing some hands. Uh, yes, you have it. How do you balance your traveling, your personal life, with your inner journey, growing spiritual? I think my understanding of spirituality is that um, if you're able to stay in a even state, you know, like you don't get affected by changing circumstances. If you can somehow manage that. to me that is what spirituality is and that's the path of spirituality so i think this is a great challenge for me this place is a great challenge for me because it constantly keeps giving me these you know these changing environments and 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 constantly keeps challenging me you know thank you but anushka how much do hits and flops and numbers affect you do they affect you how do you deal with them yeah of course they affect me i mean affects my career but i mean i will not make a film with the intention of ye picture na itne kamayenge because wo you cannot you cannot decide that and you cannot ever uh, ever understand that uske liye salman khan ke sath film yeah salman that you know that for sure that's a given but uh, <coughs> box office numbers are important because obviously it's important for our industry for films to do well because otherwise what happens is when when big films don't do well and a lot of money has been spent on those films one of which happens to be my own film bombay velvet and then smaller films like nh10 and philori and all of these films cannot get made you know right is there a downside to stardom also yeah there's a downside to everything i feel like the judgments you know the the scrutiny people are very quick to judge you and that is a bit overwhelming i mean i think you are at a receiving a receiving end of uh, of a lot of uh, hatred sometimes ma'am uh, you have the microphone you started production or being a producer so early in your career do you have or your instinct tell you that the fame or the career of heroines is too short yeah actually see that's the thing like i i don't think like that i think i'm i'm not a conformist in that sense you know i'm not saying that i'm a rebel but i i don't conform very easily as a person i have to be very convinced about what i'm doing and i don't think that's true i think uh, i think it's very derogatory when people say that about actresses that we have a shelf life like as though we're an item or some kind of you know perishable commodity, commodity. Yeah, perishable exactly. commodity yeah. because i mean it ha- i mean it's it, it has it, it it doesn't make any sense to me and i don't think that's the case quite honestly right now today there are actresses who've been working for many many years you know like vidya and and karina and karina is going to come back after delivering a baby she's going to be back on set and right. and uh, you, you know kajal and aishwarya with adela mushkil so i don't think i don't think that's the case i think people are changing i think if there are good roles for women to be in then why would they stop acting you know i mean i'm going to act till i'm 100 years old but <coughs> but there is an asymmetry there is a general presumption that men can in fact even go on being heroes uh yeah romancing much younger women doesn't happen the other way around so much yeah. gap between you and sharuk what i mean about 20 years yeah. in fact it's more than 20 years yeah. right so Maybe, uh, yeah. again the gap between you and uh, uh, salman, salman amir doesn't work the other way around it's not like that in hollywood so do you think it's because women are not challenging it sufficiently and do you no, want to do it i think it's because of the society that we live in i think women are looked at as uh, desirable objects you know and uh, in films they've been shown in that way also so i feel like somewhere if you're only wanting them for superficiality of you know their existence then then it is it is a perishable you know career but i think like i said if the roles are going to be uh, more powerful and depict the society in the right way then i don't think this is going to be the case and i can assure you that this is not going to be the case 
in in few years. Also, the question of lack of pay parity between male actors and female actors. Of course, some of you, uh, Kangana, Deepika, you have spoken about it and have challenged that. Yeah. Is that still a huge issue, or or are things changing in the industry? So it just changed after I spoke about it. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, hey, I'm sure I spoke about it here. Take more money. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I I mean obviously it hasn't. It, I mean I. <laughs> It, this this exists even in uh, in 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 you know in the West and a lot of yes. actresses there also have spoken about it. I think this is um, because of you know I guess just women always having to do feel finding the need to do more than you know what they have to 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 prove themselves. Um, but yeah, but I think uh, like I said, you know, I'll be honest with you. I'm not trying to compare. If I'm thinking that I should be getting paid the same money as Amir Shah Rukh, I'm, I'm not stupid. Obviously, I know that I can't. But I think the dif the disparity that's between actors, your own, right. you know, your contemporaries, right. I think that's that's a bit much. Well, in fact, the difference that you're speaking out made was that other people also began to speak out. Other yeah. women began to speak out, emboldened others to speak out. But what response do you get? from the powers that be in film industry are they empathetic to this idea or they just think abhi zyada bol rahe hain bolne do there were some people who told me that i was talking too much talking too much really? <laughs> <laughs> did the same time i went into another but, interview and but, i continued speaking but but did somebody said acha nahi hoga no no, no. So that's that, what i'm saying that's the way it is i mean you've to understand one thing if you're doing well kuch bura nahi hoga everyone's going to if they say oh i hate you and you're the worst and i'm never going to work with you if you're doing finer they'll come and work with you that's, that's right. how this industry function that's how this world function so you should just really so go on doing what you're doing somebody had the mic there i want to know when did you decide and make up your mind that you want to enter bollywood as an actor and how did you go about it i think the decision came when i got to know what film i'm doing so the thing is i actually i got the film also because i manish sharma who is the director of band baja barat was an assistant director on the film and he was the one who was doing my audition so when i came for this audition you know i was being i was getting rejected in so many ads that i just like had it you know like i would become the top two shortlisted girls and like i would never get the call it was always the other girl who was getting it so i was so frustrated with these auditions and all of this and i just didn't care i was like i don't care anymore if things happen they happen if they don't happen they don't happen so i went for this attitude for the you know for for the for the audition also and i think somewhere mani sharma thought that i didn't wanted that much like i didn't seem desperate enough to you know to get this role and he somehow felt like that is a quality that they wanted they wanted someone who was raw and kind of unaware you know of of things and i was pretty unaware of things so uh your your first two big hits yeah portrayed you as a punjabi very much in the punjabi popular culture yeah uh people think i'm punjabi do you still get confused <laughs> for a yeah, punjabi yeah 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 I, i was shooting for filori in uh, not hold patiala will not hold it against you no you know they hold it against me so uh, i <laughs> <laughs> so um, i was in patiala and some ex ig had come to like you know meet us and also we were there and he just started talking to me in punjabi right so me uh, courteously i was like nodding my head and all that and then I was responding in Hindi, like little bit what I understood, but he continued talking in Punjabi. Then I realized that he's getting a little irritated, you know. So then I got, I was like, oh, he thinks I'm Punjabi and I'm not talking in Punjabi, like I'm not respecting my, you know, language and all that. Then I explained to him, I said, I'm not Punjabi, I'm a UP ka Sharma. So he's like, ah, oh, acha acha acha, okay okay. <laughs> but before that, he was like, Punjabi kiri bol rahi ho. Varun. So uh, this is about one of your films this year, Sultan. so there was some debate now because yeah. you know this um, raised awareness about feminism and yes. all so there was yes. some debate about the character you know not like not going all the way and yeah. quitting and for 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 yeah. a family life yeah. and there were allegations directly on you saying yeah. why did you do this and all that because probably people expect now you to after an instant probably expect you to you know do those kind of roles which are strong female characters so how do you deal with this kind of criticism and this kind of expectations from you where you know people want you to be a kind of torch bearer for feminism in cinema or something like that see firstly i don't uh, agree with this criticism about the film um, as an actor i like i was talking about it i i need to be very convinced about what i'm doing the option at the time when someone she did not like she got she she, was, she just got pregnant right 
and the op the op the op option is like what either you have the child or you don't have the child so i think that the ability to take that choice to make that choice that i want to have a choice i want to have a kid is also a uh, is a liberating thing you know i mean you, are you telling me that there cannot be a girl who who is a you know who's uh, idealistic and feminist and and if she gets into the situation she's going to be like like no i'm not going to have my child and i'm going to follow my career i mean it's a decision right it's not like she was giving up like you know she was saying ki matlab main karungi nahi in fact in the film she comes back to wrestling she starts wrestling again in the film you know so i think what happens is yes of course this is great that we're talking about you know um these uh, you know about feminism and 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 i am a feminist and i i believe in you know i believe in it but uh, sometimes i feel like you can't have a very you can't oversimplify things like this you know it's very easy to say oh as i it this is not correct because she didn't choose career no the ability to make a choice is a liberating factor and that that i according to me means like you know you you, you are a, a, a liberated woman so i don't agree with this criticism also it kind of scares me now because i feel like there will be times in my career where i would want to i'm an actor i'll play characters uh not that arfa of sultan was that i stand by it but i will play characters in the future where my character will, will not have the same ideals as me and she will not be the kind of person that i am so am i supposed to only play those roles so i don't understand why people are so quick to judge actors in that sense you know i mean in fact you're telling me that i can never play a role where a girl doesn't have this these these values so i'm saying there could be that the representation has to be correct is all i'm saying we'll take a short break and we'll be right back with you don't go away you have the microphone now i have two questions uh, one is uh, what has been your experience how easy it has been working with salman in sultan uh, that is one and the second one i think in uh, there is intense competition today in bollywood also i mean you know and many actresses you know come and you know there are so do you have fears you know whether you would sort of survive and how do you brace up yourself in this environment yeah so i'll answer your first question first um my experience with salman khan see i actually heard a lot of things about him um uh, so i was a bit scared before i met him but the first thing that i see when i meet him is he's just lying on the floor carpeted floor in a gym we were supposed to do some photo shoot and he's just lying on the floor so i mean i was like okay that's not what you expect when you go to a shoot so i think somebody throws you off like that you know as a person um and he catches you off guard and um i would say that i I have a I've had a good working relationship with him. I don't have any personal equation with him as such. We've not spoken about anything during this during the course of this film. Um but I um but yeah, I mean I guess he's somebody who can just stand I don't know how it happens. I don't even know how he does it. I don't even know how it's possible, but he just stands in front of the screen and just does this and people are like, "Wow." If I do this, I mean, I कुछ करो है एक्टिंग तो करो गॉड गिव इट टू हिम या फॉर दैट एंड द सेकेंड क्वेश्चन कॉम्पिटिशन इज वेरी गुड आई एक्चुअली फील वेरी इंस्पायर्ड एक्चुअली एंड एंड आई नो दैट एवरीबडी थिंग्स ओ एक्ट्रेस इज फाइट विद ईच अदर इन कैट फाइट्स एंड ऑल दैट विच इज रियली अ रिग्रेसिव थॉट बट आई डू फील वेरी इंस्पायर्ड बाय द परफॉर्मेंसेज एंड सम ऑफ माई कंटेम्प्रेरीज हैव मेड दिस ईयर एंड लास्ट ईयर एंड it helps me because then i want to push myself more you know if i don't have competition then i'll become complacent yeah but the thing is i don't let fear come in i think insecurity is always going to be there you know you can't live without them but i don't let insecurities like decide of uh, things for me you know i still know my game plan like my game i know right so it doesn't get i don't get affected by that but i can take the positive out of it and just you know want to work uh, harder and you know get even i want to play those roles and get that 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 fire in me yeah anushka it's too tempting to not ask you you worked with the three khans amir salman shahrukh who are you, you most to... star struck by no i'm not going to ask you who you prefer 
No, I thought you were going to ask me to say one one thing about them no, and I'm no, so no. tired. Who, who are you more starstruck by? Starstruck? You know, I'm not a starstruck kind of a person. I've never been. Like, even when I was growing up, I've, when I used to see actors and all, I used to not really... In fact, there's an incident where my brother, we'd gone to see Rahul Dravid was going to was doing some ad in Chinnaswamy Stadium in Bangalore. So my brother, my brother's like, we have to go, we have to go. I want to meet my brothers to play cricket. So we've gone there, and I'm like, yeah, okay, I want to go Rahul Dravid. Yeah, see, <laughs> my brother's like Rahul Dravid, Rahul Dravid. I was like, yeah, and he's he's just getting like very nervous, and I'm like, yeah, she's like, what are you doing here? <laughs> I'm like, hey, huh? So I, I take this book and I take this pen and I go to him and I'm like, autograph these and all. And then he, he starts, he takes my pen and he starts signing autographs and then he starts signing other people's autographs. But that's why I waited for like a couple of people and after that I was like, man, give me back my pen. So I was like, excuse me, excuse me, can you please give me back my pen? Can you please give me back my pen? Question there. Uh, I was just <laughs> curious as to what uh, your stand is on Hollywood. And uh, if offered a film, would you want to be a part of it, considering uh, like the pop culture, the West culture? Is it something you're looking forward to and uh, that you take positively? Uh, it, I don't think it's something that I'm working towards. Um, if I See, the way I look at it, for me, it would just be another project. I'll be very honest and I'm, I mean it. Because I don't, I don't think that it's a step up. Like if you do this, so you're, you know, I don't, I don't think that. But I do feel that yes, it is. It is. Um, it is a, another opportunity for me. It would be to be, um, you know, uh, able to do some something incredible. But it'll have to be a role. You know, it, like I'll have to do. I'll have to have something to do in it. Um, and it would be exactly what I'm doing here. Like I'm not going to do something there that I don't do here. Yeah. And uh, I'm not working towards this. Having said that. Priyanka and Deepika, who have achieved this, I give a lot of uh, credit to them for doing this because it's not easy to up, you know uproot yourself and then go to another place and you know start new from there. It's a scary thought, and they're doing it and they're doing a great job of it. Also, Indian representation on um, on the international scene is much better today. You know, we're, it's not just about this Apu from Simpson who talks like that, like Indian talk like this. <laughs> so you know, nowadays, like you see. Uh, sitcoms led by people of Indian origin, you know, um, some of the better ones actually that I've seen recently, uh, like Night Off, which I love and, you know, that has, uh, you know, your Asian representation, uh, he's Pakistani, but yeah, so I feel like the, the representation is correct now, you know, it's not just like, I'm a friend Indian, you know, in a thing, so I feel like it's, it's a good time and uh, if an opportunity comes, yeah, of course, I would, I would take it up if it's a good opportunity. One of your movies this year was mired in controversy for reasons that are known to all of us. What is your stand on it? Do you think stars, artists of any kind or sports persons should allow or should their careers or whatever they do be allowed to be influenced by politics and tensions between nations? That's a very wide actually. Kind of. In this case, what was your stand? See, I thought that if this was a legal thing, you know, it was decided by the government that this is, you know, we're not going to take any international artist or particularly from a country. That's obviously we would abide by it. But I understand also the sentiments, you know, that people uh, are going through and at that time also. Um, and, I, and I feel like if that's the case, then we would abide by that also. But in Edel's, you know, as, as an example, we shot that film at a very different time. Um, you know, uh, the Prime Minister was, in fact, he, he even went to Pakistan. Uh, so it was a very different time when we shot it. So it was just seeming a bit, like, unfair that, you know, um, this was being done or whatever. But I feel like, I feel like there are greater problems. And I don't know why it's always films that have to take a hit when such things happen. Because, because when that, when that whole thing was happening, I mean, what, really like what difference is it right. really making, right? I mean, I feel like that's what I don't understand. I feel like everything that, every time something happens, it's always like the industry and people in the industry who are like, okay, you know, they become soft targets. Um, and that's sad, you know, um, because uh, what the issue was is far greater than what was being, what right. was being right. made out, you know. Um, 
and yeah, I think uh, it, yeah, that's what I think. So, do you feel sorry for Pakistani artists who who have been here for some time? I bet you know many of them. Do you feel sorry for them that they can't showcase their talent here? See, well, I do. So, I will. Uh, I mean, I feel like take my neck out. I feel like if any kind of restrictions for for people, you know, um, especially in you know, in your work and as creative people, obviously that's that's very disheartening, um, and. Uh, but I mean, that's this. It is how it is, and you know, it is how it is. Who has a microphone? Yes, you've been waiting for a long time. Filmmaking does involve huge process and a great uh, amount of time. So, is it that you get carried away by the character you play in, or how much it's difficult for you to get into that character or adopt a new character, running parallelly, parallelly to a different one? Yeah, and that happens a lot sometimes because you're shooting multiple films at the same time. This happened to me this year. Uh, I was shooting Sultan and Filori at the same time, which are two very different films and two very different characters. Uh, and you know, obviously as an actor, you would like to get some time and prepare for a role and then start shooting. But that's not how it is. You know, people, you're doing a film, the release date is first decided and then you start shooting for the film. So I wish I had more time. Like for example, in Sultan, I had, um, I signed the film and within five days I was on set. Right, so, and I had a lot to do. I mean, I had to pick up a Haryanvi accent. I had to look like a wrestler. I don't look like a wrestler. And, you know, I had to, uh, you know, train my body in a, in a way. I had to learn the sport, most importantly. And I wanted to do it really well. I wished I'd had more time to do it. Uh, but I didn't. Uh, and, you know, I think, uh, so some, somewhere like that process is a very enjoyable process for an actor, you know, when you're creating a character. Um, and, yeah, when they're getting, like, interlinked with another another role um, it is hard but but I mean if you have to do it you have to do it yeah what do you do that's just how it is we can just take the last question and you sir how do you deal with failure and how does that influence your next decision <coughs> especially if it's something you really want to do but it's failed before how do you how do you go about deciding what to do I think it's not productive to let the burden of your failure, you know, decide your uh, course of action in the future, because uh, it is, it is, an, you know, I don't think it's it helps you in any way. You can't come with past baggages. I can't come thinking, oh, this kind of film didn't work, so now I should not do this, this, this in a film. Also, you don't know why a film doesn't do well. Like, I don't think people can decide and, and they can ever know why exactly a film has not done well because it's so subjective, right? People like it or they don't like it, you know? So, so yeah, I, I, I don't do that. I think my decisions are always very free of, you know, any uh, prejudice. Um, and I feel that's a more, uh, that's the more productive way of, uh, you know, taking calls. Anushka, uh, just the last question from me. Uh, when we converse the last time in 2012, you said that earlier people, normal janta, would copy what stars were doing. Yeah. Now stars have to learn to reflect what normal janta is doing. Yeah. So in four years, has that trend become stronger or are we back to being fantasy land? See, it's a matter of what time you were in, you know. Um, today, Everything is more accessible, you know, actors are more accessible because of social media and all of that. And I think today what happens is that um, you, you're not playing larger than life character. I mean, of course, Salman Khan would, but I'm saying even then he played a role like, you know, Sultan, where it was more grainy and, you know, more rooted and uh, he made a mistake, you know, where he's not like, oh, he's only doing the right thing. He made a mistake and he, and he, and he redeemed himself. Uh, but I think uh, that's because people are, you know, expecting that. People, um, people, don't, I, people don't want to see something that they don't understand. So I think right now it is, the, the idea is to become more real and make more, you know, realistic films and, and bring stories from, you know, uh, from all, all kinds of places. And I think that's why I, I was saying that it's very important to then work with new people so you can you can get different, you know, um, uh, perceptions, you know, of, of, of making or, or story or, yeah, so I think that's very important. But yeah, I don't think it's as aspirational as it used to be because everyone's more accessible today. And so that's why films are becoming more realistic. 
a film characters are becoming more more realistic yeah i think yeah yeah but i think uh, we can carry on with this conversation but we can't because her time is of much greater value than ours so rushka thank you very much and thank you all and for being patient and being good listeners and please do tune in again uh, to our next edition of off the cuff or otc when we try and get somebody who can compete with anushka at least in charm if not charm and talent both anushka <laughs> thank you very much and do we thank you very much thank you so much thank you anushka